Happy Monday, everyone. You probably noticed that during our Safer at Home order that our church services that were online looked a little different. Well, now that we are getting back to uh, in-person worship here at St. John's, uh, you've probably seen whether you've actually come back in person here at church or whether you continue to watch online, that our services are getting back to normal. Our style of worship that we have um, here at St. John's, it has like a pattern or a routine to it that we call the liturgy. And so as more and more people are coming back to worship here, I figured that it would be a good opportunity to spend five or six weeks to uh, discuss different parts of the liturgy and to talk about why we do them and what they mean. The first part of the liturgy that we're going to talk about today is called the invocation. And every service here at St. John starts with the words of invocation, which typically are, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Here's what the uh, Christian Worship Manual says about the invocation. The Trinitarian invocation expressly reminds the worshipers that the God they will meet here is the true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is to be worshipped here and now. The words of invocation are also intended uh, to remind worshipers of another time that those words were spoken, at their baptism. Baptism is a very special day in the life of a Christian. It is a day that they, they become a part of God's family. For many people, they were baptized when they were little babies and their parents brought them up to the front of church to the baptismal font. Then the pastor poured water on their head and said, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Christian Worship Manual continues, The invocation also warmly calls to mind the words through which believers have been baptized into Christ and made members of his church. And you will notice at church that the baptismal font is placed at the front of the church as another constant reminder of our baptism. After the words of invocation, the congregation joins in saying, Amen. This is our way of responding that, yes, God is here to bless us. Yes, we are here to worship him. Yes, it is good to be here. So why do we start each service with the words of invocation? Because it serves as a reminder that we have entered into the presence of of the one true God to worship him, and we have been made his children through baptism. What a wonderful way to start worship. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, thank you for telling us about the Savior through your word. Help us to know how important your word is, to hear it and to learn it often, and to believe it always. In your name we pray. Amen. Next week, we'll talk about confession and absolution. We'll see you then, and God's blessings.